morning and welcome to Church at Home. We are so excited to have you this morning. Just wanted to share a couple of announcements with you before we jump in. Number one is groups went live last Sunday. We hope that those of you who joined the group had an amazing first session. I know I did, but here's the deal. I know some of you still haven't signed up yet, and I want to encourage you and let you know that it is not too late. So if you haven't signed up for a group, go ahead and sign up on our website, jump in. The second week is better than never. So don't hesitate. And the second thing that I want to share with you, and this is something that Casey and I are super excited about, is we are celebrating back to school next Saturday afternoon. It doesn't matter if you're going into kindergarten or you're starting your senior year of high school, we want to see you at the lower level of the old Buda Elementary to, uh, to celebrate that with us. We're going to have snowballs chants, we're going to be having tons of fun, and we, uh, we really hope that we see you there. All right, now it's time to get on your feet and let's worship together.
Well, good morning, church family. We are so excited to be together today. And uh, I've got the privilege to preach with the love of my life. And uh, Lisa and I are here. And we just want you to know how much we love you, yeah. uh, how much we, we miss you. That's right. And uh, we're excited to share a message called Better Together. But before we even dive into that, we want to take a minute just to let you know how thankful we are for your generosity uh, we try to do this every once in a while just to give you an update. And financially, I want you to know that we're still in a great place and uh, God is still doing amazing things. We're saving lots of money every month. And so I just want to say thank you for believing in the blessing of the tithe and being a generous church. Uh, we are doing a lot more than just getting bills paid. We really are uh, using these resources to see the gospel go forth yeah. and to see lives transformed. And so... Just want to say thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. And then also, in case you missed it last week, uh, it was also in the announcements. It'll continue to be so. But we launched a free gift that we want to give you. And if you missed last week and you're not sure what I'm talking about, I want to let you know that right now, Media, we partnered with them. And so Vertical has already purchased this. And we're talking, this is a Christian library. It is yeah. tens of thousands of amazing resources to help yeah. you grow in your faith. It is the Christian version of Netflix. It is the Holy Spirit of Hulu. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it is an amazing gift. And why are we doing it? Because we love you. And uh, we want to help you grow That's in right. your relationship with Jesus. And you're going to find topical studies, Bible studies. You're going to find lessons for kids. You're going to find uh, even uh, conference sessions. There are so many things on there. And you may say, Pastor Sean, I didn't know about it. How did I get it? You should have received an email. And if you did not receive that email, just follow the simple directions on the screen and we will make sure that you get signed up for this awesome resource. And again, it's absolutely free. It's our gift to you. And I yeah. promise you, if you put it into practice, God is going to do amazing things in your life. And uh, that's what we've been praying about. That's, that's right. what we've been believing. How many of you know we're better together? Babe, do you Amen. know we're better together? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And the Bible says it this way in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9. Two are better. Come on, shout out better. Better. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity the fool. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. We've got to understand this about God's economy. It is not good to do life alone. That's right. Two are better than one. And the author here then goes on to describe two reasons, gives us two reasons. The first one is we can do more together than we can do alone. Mm -hmm. And you would think, okay, two people double the accomplishment. It actually triples, quadruples the accomplishment. Why? Because there's encouragement. Uh, there, there is a, a spurring one another on. There is a protection, a covering. Two are better than one. And the second reason, he says, is because if one falls down, you can help the other person up. And here's the truth. There are going to be seasons in your life, seasons in my life, where we stumble, where we get down, where we're not excited about following Jesus, whatever it might be. And we need to be surrounded by people who can help us get up and move us towards Jesus Christ. So yeah. I want you to write this down. It's going to be the backdrop for everything we talk about. And again, today, very simple message, shorter than normal. And here's why, because we've got some exciting news that we want to share with you at the end of the message. But I want you to write this down. It'll slingshot us into where we're going today. In God's kingdom, we is always better than me. Yeah. In God's kingdom, we is always better than me. I always tell people when they meet me, I'll say, have you met my better half? Not just because she's better, come on somebody, I'm married up in Jesus' name, but because when we're together, we are better, yeah. but not just with husbands and wives. Maybe you're here and you're like, I'm not even married. Listen to me, but you are surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ. And in God's kingdom, we've got to get this thinking deep into our hearts 
that we is always better than me. That's right. And so today, as we look at that principle that we is always better than me, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our Bibles and we're going to open God's word to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Yeah. So I want you to join me. Grab your Bibles and join me reading. Verse 23, it says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. Amen. All the more as we see the day approaching. So, Listen, I want you to go ahead and write this first point down. We're going to have three points today. They're going to be quick, simple, great points. Um, go, but go ahead and write this first one down. Together we stay anchored. That's right. Together we stay anchored. Go ahead and look at verse 23 one more time. It says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Yep. Pay attention what we're called to do. Pay attention to the verb that we see that, that Hebrews is telling us to hold on to. It says, hold unswervingly. You know, life is full of just difficult seasons. It's full of unexpected challenges and storms that we don't even see coming. It's full of unpredictable circumstances. We're, we're living in a, yeah, in a pandemic that I'm sure none of us thought uh, we would ever be living in. That's right. But Hebrews tells us to hold unswervingly, not to let go. Yeah. Don't lose your grip. In fact, tighten the grip. That's tighten right. that grip. Don't lose heart and, and, and don't lose heart and always... Um, profess the hope that you have. Always do not forget that that hope that we have is Jesus. That's right. During every circumstance, every storm, every season, that hope that we have is Jesus. And so Jesus is our firm foundation. And so whenever right. we find ourselves like shaken and, and we're not sure and, and, and we're starting to feel uncertain about life, Hebrews tells us, hold tight. That's right. Don't loosen your grip. On. Hold on to God's word like your life depends on it because it in fact does. It does. It in fact, it, it, it depends on Jesus. And so, but here's the best part. Before it says to hold unswervingly, it says, let us. Let us. It says, let us. And so what I love is that command of us doing that together. That's right. Life can be hard. Yep. We, in fact, we are promised in God's word that we will walk through trials. We will walk through hard times. Come on. We will walk through seasons yep. that are not our, our best day. We won't be living our best life all the time, right? And so life is going to be hard, but God is faithful. Come on. And together we stay anchored. Come on. We stay anchored together. And uh, as we were preparing for this, I was reminded of a time where I was fishing with my brother. I, I loved to fish with my brother and I hated to fish with my brother at the same time. And the reason why I loved it is because he was a better fisherman. Uh, he's older than me, more experienced. And so I'd love to go with him because he knew all the places to go. He knew the best spots to fish at. Here's the reason why I hated to fish with him is because he would be so bossy in the boat and he would make me like sit in seats I didn't want to sit in. So we get there and he says, hey, Sean, you're going to sit in this seat. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to sit in that seat. And yeah. He's like, why don't you want to sit in that seat? I said, because every time you swing the pole behind your head and you almost hook me in the head. I said, I don't, I don't want to sit in that seat. Let's like switch locations. Let me go to the front of the boat. Well, listen, I lost that fight. I sit in where he, I didn't want to sit. And I kid you not, his second cast, his second cast, he slings the rod back. He hooks me in the head. Like I'm talking legit, babe. This is not like a kind of hooked me. The hook is in my scalp oh my and there is blood coming down my face. And I am ticked off at my brother, and he has the audacity, listen to this, to blame me. He goes, you had your head in the way of me casting. And I'm like, are, are, you, are you kidding me? Like, let's go back right now to the shore. Like, I'm going back to the dock. I'm going to go fish on my own. So I ran up, asked my dad, can I get in the little boat, and I'll just go by myself? My dad said yes. He said, but listen, you need to get the anchor in the boat. We had this huge old anchor, and it sat at the edge of our dock, and the job was to pick it up and put it into whatever boat 
you were going to go fishing. So he said, look, it's getting windy. Make sure you put the anchor in the boat. Well, here's the deal. I couldn't lift the anchor by myself. It it was that heavy. It took two people. But do you think I'm going to ask my brother who just hooked me in the head for help? Nope. So I just didn't tell my dad anything. I said, yep, yep, I'll get it. Well, I left the anchor there. And so we go fishing, just me, drive into the bay. This is the best bay to fish at. The fish were biting. It was like feeding time. Like I knew I was going to catch a lot. So I shut off the engine, and it's really rocky. I'm talking like it's really, really windy. Well, I've got no anchor. And so I ignore that, and I go, and I put my hook on the line, and I go to cast. Here's the problem. By the time I looked up, I was like 200 yards (laughs) drifted this way. So I had to put the motor back on, drive back to the bay. This repeated over and over and over and over. I got no fishing done. I didn't catch anything. Listen to me. Not because I didn't have an anchor. Here's why. Because I didn't ask for my brother's help to get the anchor in the boat. Yeah. I needed the anchor in the boat. And here's the truth. We've got to be surrounded by people that love us enough to help us stay anchored in the midst of life's difficulties. And this is why the Bible says this. Paul says this in Colossians chapter 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Like last week, we talked about the word of God. We need the word of God in us. Paul said, hey, let it dwell in you richly. Teaching, and notice this, admonishing one another. What does that word admonish means? It literally means this, to warn, to love somebody enough to warn them, but also to keep them stable. Mm -hmm. It's so that we don't swerve to the right or the left. We don't get distracted. We don't take our eyes off of Jesus. We don't lose hope. We do what you just said, babe. Hold unswervingly. Notice this. So we admonish one another And all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts to God. Paul says, listen, here's what you need. You need people in your life who are going to help stabilize you. Yeah. Who are going to be somebody that connects you to the anchor. Well, who's the anchor? Jesus is the anchor. Jesus is the anchor. And if I would have asked my brother for help, listen to me, I would have got some fishing done. I would have been able to accomplish the task, but I didn't ask for his help. And the Bible says we've got to get this in our thinking that two are better than one. I want to read Hebrews 10, 23 again. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Come on, shout out hope. hope. Come on, shout it out like you're excited. Say hope. Hope. For he who has promised is faithful. I love the author of Hebrews. He says two things. You've got to recognize hope and you've got to recognize that the one who promises you good things is faithful. So this is what we're anchoring people to, the hope of Jesus and the fact that Jesus, who promises to be faithful, is in fact faithful. How do we do it, Elisa? That's right. So number one, the first way we do it is we remind each other of God's promises. Come on. We remind each other of God's promises. So in those seasons where it's really difficult, you have to be surrounded by people if you want people to remind you of God's promises. And I have to surround myself with people around me so that I can remind others of God's promises too. And so we need each other. We need each other for the, account, for the accountability and for the encouragement both ways. Hey, and can I say one thing to that? Because I think this is important. Can we just get honest in church today that sometimes we know the promises of God, yeah. but it's hard to believe them? Yeah. Like you're hurting circumstantially, you know, things hit the fan and it yeah. seems like utter chaos. And in the midst, you might even know what's true, but it's hard to believe what's yeah. true. Listen, you need to have people that will come alongside of you, just like she said, and will remind you, hey, listen to me, the promises of God are in fact true. Don't yeah. trust what you see, trust what he says. That's right. And the second one is we need to remind each other of God's faithfulness. Because sometimes we remember the promises, but sometimes we're praying for something. We're praying for such a long time for something and we're waiting for breakthrough and we feel like we're not getting breakthrough. And so we need to be surrounded by people like, hey, do not forget the character of God. Do not forget that he is is faithful. He is trustworthy. You can trust him. You can trust that he's going to be faithful to you to to fulfill everything that he has called you to, everything that he promises you. He uh, He will fulfill it. And here's the reason why. 
Because the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. He doesn't change. Yeah. So if he doesn't change, listen to me, his faithfulness doesn't change. That's right. He will be faithful in every situation. We need to be surrounded by people who will help us stay anchored. Here's the second one. Together, we stay focused. Yeah. Like, it is so easy to get our eyes off of Jesus. It's so easy to get distracted by yeah. the things of this world. Sometimes it's money. Like sometimes it's popularity, students. Sometimes it's just wanting to be liked by everybody yeah. at school. And so easy to get our eyes off of what is true. So let's read the text again and jump into verse 24. And let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who is promised is faithful. Verse 24. And let us, notice that language again. Not just let me, not just you, us. We're doing this as a family. Yeah. Why? Because we're better together. In God's economy, we is always better than me. That's right. So this commandment is this. Let us consider how we may spur. Come on, shout out spur. Spur. Say it like a cowboy. Say spur. 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 <laughs> Listen, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. I love the author here. It's powerful. Paul says, here's what I need you to do. I need you to consider. Yeah. The word consider means to intentionally think about or carefully determine a way to do something. Yeah. It, it literally means I need to put thought into this. Like I need to live my life looking for ways to spur my wife on. She needs to be thinking through intentionally, yeah. carefully looking for ways to spur me on. Brothers and sisters, whether you're married or not, you have been called into a family. And Paul That's says, right. that I want you to think about, I want you to intentionally consider. I want you to very carefully determine how you can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. I love Proverbs 27 verse 17. Yeah. As iron sharpens iron, so one man or one woman sharpens another. There is a mutual benefit. There is mutual sharpening that when I'm doing my job with my sister, my sister is doing her job with me. When I'm doing my job with my wife, she's doing her job with me. And together, we're staying focused yeah. on what matters. Together, we're keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Uh, we're staying encouraged. We're staying excited about the things of God. There is a mutual sharpening, a mutual benefit. But notice that Paul uses the word spur. Yeah. And, and let, me, let me explain to you what this is. A spur would be that metal, kind of sharp, if you will. It almost looked like a little star, but it had more points on it. And it would be attached to the back of a cowboy boot. And so if you were riding a horse, you would use these spurs to dig into the underbelly of the horse. Yeah. Now listen to me. It doesn't like hurt the horse as in like injure the horse. But it irritates the horse enough where now you can control the yeah. horse to where you want it to go. In other words, you're on a horse. There's a destination that you want to get to. So you would push with these spurs under the belly of the horse as a way to get the horse to move. It is an important understanding. And it's an amazing thought, right? Think about this little metal star. Think about a massive horse. Is it almost unbelievable yeah. to think that something so small could move something so big? Yeah. That, that something so small could have such a huge impact. Paul's saying, listen, that's the picture I'm trying to give you to understand how powerful it is when you live your life to intentionally think about and to carefully consider how you can encourage. Listen, a small act of spurring yeah, yeah. has huge results. That's right. It is incredibly, incredibly powerful. That's right. And you know, the Coopers at the Cooper house, we have quite the horse stories. Come on somebody. <laughs> Sean has shared one before, but I thought today I could share I've from my two. perspective. I've shared two. Yeah. He shared a couple. Um, but the first time I'd ever been on a horse, Sean has shared before that we were in the Dominican Republic on our honeymoon, and he had a brilliant idea 
to um, like let's go horseback riding and um, it's romantic. you know here's the truth I've never I'd never been on a horse in fact um, I don't know anything really about animals I'd never even grew up with a pet in the house and even like a babe, hermit crab babe, that makes me sad or a hamster yeah That's well sad. And so, but I'm real honest about um, my inabilities to understand <laughs> animals and, um, and my, um, how, how my horse riding experiences have been zero. And so I thought, you know, we're with this big group of people. I'm going to be really wise and I'm going to watch what everyone else does first. And so, so I'm getting ready and we, we get off the bus and there's a whole group of people. And um, hey, by the way, it wasn't even like fully a bus. Yeah, like it was they call like it a, a bus. Not really a bus. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, there's a big group of people, and I'm kind of like standing kind of off to the side a little bit, um, uh, just like hoping to like not be the first one picked. And I think, uh, I think they picked me first because they thought I spoke Spanish. And they thought like, oh, we'll talk to her, and then like everyone else will follow her. Well, ha, huh, I don't speak Spanish Zero. very well at all. And so um, they pick me, and I get to go be the first one on this horse. And I'm like, great. Well, the system broke down. Come on. But I thought I was going to be able to work this system of watching other people first, and I didn't. So I hop on this horse, and, um, and my horse was like, like pieced out. It just like started going in another direction. All the people were standing here. My horse was eating, like walking around eating like it was its job to eat, like it hadn't eaten in like three weeks. And, and I'm like trying to like, try to like steer the horse the other way. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm wearing flip flops. I don't have boots or a spur in my flip flops. And, and I mean, I don't even think my horse had a bit in its mouth. Like it was just real, it's kind of real shady situation. And so anyway, my horse is wandering, and here I have this inability to encourage my horse to do what I want it to do. Yeah. I, I have an inability to encourage an outcome that I'm hoping for or encourage my, ho my horse to go toward a desired destination. But in Hebrews, Hebrews, it tells us, and it's very clear where we're supposed to spur one another on. That's right. For two things, toward love and toward good deeds. That's right. Toward love and good deeds. And can we just say, just for the record, it was a romantic horseback ride. Yeah. Like, a little bit? Well, I almost died, but. Yes, but we learned a death. lot about each other, <laughs> and uh, we grew in our marriage right yeah. there. So listen, that's right. Like, what's the destination? It's not just moving people forward. He says what it is, right? Love and yeah. good deeds. Like there is a destination. We're trying to get each other to these two things, love and yeah. good deed. Well, what does love represent? Here's the first one. Write it down. We push each other to love God. Yeah. This is what it means to stay focused. Hey, don't get distracted by the things of this world. Don't get your eyes off of Jesus. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to spur you on to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love people the way God loves you. Well, how do we express our love for people? This is the second thing he brings up, good deeds. Well, what do good deeds represent? Write it down. We push each other to serve others. Yeah. Like, how do we express our love? In marriage, how do we express our love? We serve one another. Yeah. And, and as brothers and sisters, how do we express our love for each other? We serve each other. So our job then is to spur one another on towards love and good deeds. I love 1 Peter chapter 4.10. Each one should use whatever gift, come on, we've all received a spiritual gift. If we're in Christ, we got spiritual gifts. Well, we're to use those gifts so that we can, notice this, say it with me, serve others. No, no, say it with me. Come on. Serve, serve others. others. Faithful administering God's grace in its various forms. So here's, here's, here's what we've covered so far, that together we stay anchored. Yeah. Together, we stay focused. And here's the third and final. Uh, the last one is together, we stay encouraged. encouraged. So write that down. Together, we stay encouraged. You know, encouragement is one of um, 
uh, the most underutilized but the most powerful gifts in Come the body on. of Christ I today. Fully agree. And 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 sometimes uh, we can forget to encourage towards love and good deeds or to encourage like, hey, I, I notice you're not going toward love and good deeds, so I'm going to spur you on towards love and good deeds. Yeah. Or hey, I notice that you just need a, a reminder to go towards love and good deeds, so I'm going to encourage you to go towards love and good deeds. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, here's the truth, the opposite of encouragement is discouragement. Yeah. And sometimes discouragement comes in like a flood. Come and on. sometimes it just trickles in over time, yeah. like over yeah. like the season that we've been Come like, on. You know, living in this pandemic where it's over time, it's just like, man, this has just been a long time. And so it's like discouragement can can trickle in over time as well. At the end of the day, discouragement brings things like doubt. Yeah. And, and it brings things like defeat. And, right. and, and so, and we can quickly begin to question the promises of God. Yep. Um, the faithfulness of God, the right. power of God in his word. You know, we can, be, we can um, quickly just begin to doubt those things and feel defeated and, and, and just walk away from that. But, but here's the truth. Hebrews reminds us that we have a great high priest That's and right. he goes before us yep. and, and, and he is over the house of God. And so we can be sure of that. We can be confident in that. And, but here's the deal. Action is required, That's right. right? And this whole message today, you know, yeah. this whole message is action is required. Let us, let us hold fast. Let us hold unswervingly. Let us consider. Let us spur. There's all of this action that's required and we need to Come draw on. near and we need to confess the hope. Our hope yep. is Jesus and we Amen. need to declare our hope is Jesus yep. and, and we need to spur one another on because right. here's the truth. Sub when we begin to submit our emotions and our thoughts and our feelings to the Lord and we begin to submit that to Jesus and we begin acting on our faith, yeah. listen, and being intentional about getting in community, about being an encourager, about speaking life right. to, over our situation, over our circumstances, over our spouse, whatever we're dealing with, you know, and we think of ways, like I'm going to start thinking, being intentional about ways I can encourage my husband, I can encourage my kids, I can encourage my neighbor, I Come can on. encourage uh, my friends, you know, we start thinking about that, we continue to pursue Jesus in yeah, that, right. and at the same time, we continue to pursue people, Come on, right, toward that love and the good deeds, that's and right. so we weren't created for isolation ever. Ever. That's right. It's good. Even in the beginning when Adam was alone, he was not created for isolation and God, God um, gave him Eve. That's right. You know, so we were never created for isolation. We were created always for together. Come always. On. In fact, we weren't created for me. We're going to circle this to the beginning. We weren't created for me, right. but we were created for we. Come always. On. Amen. And um, I just I want to read the, the last of this text to you. And uh, we're going to read it all together again. And let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Mm -hmm. and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Notice this in verse 25. This is where he concludes. Not giving up meeting together. Yeah. Notice this. As some are in the what? In habit. the habit of doing. Like it's easy to develop bad habits. It's easy to, to get in a rut and actually not see the value of biblical community mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. And he says, don't do that. Don't stop meeting together or some are in the habit of doing, but instead, here's what you got to do. Encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. What day? Jesus is coming yes. back, y'all. Come on, somebody. Amen. Like he's coming back. And we've got to live with this mindset. This is not our home. Like he's preparing a home for us. Yeah. And in the meantime, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. That's you're right. going to face difficult situations. But you can take heart. I've overcome the world. Amen. Anything you face, I overcome. This is what, like my faith right now is growing. Yeah. I, my faith right now is being encouraged. Do you know what encouragement means? It means to put courage in someone yeah. to remind them of who they are. So when I encourage Elisa, I am putting courage into her. I'm reminding of her, reminding her of who she is, who, uh, who God is in her, the faithfulness of his word. And I just want to look across the camera and tell you, God loves you. Amen. God is for you. Yeah. And we're going to get through everything we're facing and we're going to get through it together. That's right. Because God is good. I want to put courage into you this morning and remind you that God loves you. 
that God is pursuing you. God is for you. Yes. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. There's not a single detail of your life that is off God's radar. He is passionately in love with you. Amen. The Bible says that he sings over you with rejoicing. That when you sleep, he doesn't slumber. Right. That he'll make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God passionately loves you. Yes, He is 100% for you. I'm getting fired up right now <laughs> in Jesus' name. Listen, there is courage yeah. that's being put into my spirit right now. And I want to speak that life over you because God is not finished with you. That's God right. is faithful. He who has promised is faithful to bring all things to completion. Come on. This is the God that we serve. And I remember Lisa and I went to our vertical students 819 worship night and we had our friends from celebration our big brother church we love them so much they've yeah. been a massive blessing to us they came and led worship and I'm telling you the atmosphere was awesome yeah and just being back in that atmosphere I know it was for students but selfishly I wanted it for me. Come on, somebody. Like, I'm going to chase after the presence yeah, of God. It was so amen. powerful. I'm meeting with God. God's speaking to me. And I remember just thinking to myself, this being together in the name of Jesus, it is utterly refreshing. Yeah. Like, it is exactly what I needed. And let me just tell you, if you've got the, the corona fatigue, come on, somebody. <laughs> like, if you're like, man, I'm overdoing church online through a computer screen, like I miss gathering, I just want you to know that I believe this is part of what God is doing in this season. He's reminding us as the church that people are a gift, yes. that meeting together is such a gift. Amen. And here's what I believe. We're never going to take corporate worship for yes. granted again. Why? Because we've experienced months of not being able to gather in person. Yeah. And we've been doing it online and we've been faithful with the resources God's given us. But I miss seeing you too. Yeah. I miss giving you hugs. I miss high-fiving you. I'm over the virtual hugs. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm a hugger. But I just need to tell you God's faithful. Yeah, that's God's right. good. Amen. Everything that he has promised he will bring to completion That's because right. our God is faithful. And so over the next several weeks, we're going to be sharing some exciting news yes. about what God is doing. But today, we want to start off the exciting news with letting you know that God has answered prayers we, we asked you to be praying. We said we're going to be praying for an executive pastor. And we've been praying for months. We've been seeking God for months. We've been asking God tough questions. We've been fasting. And you've been praying because we can feel your yes. prayers. And let me tell you what, we know you're praying because God is opening up doors. And Elise and I are so excited to let you know that God has answered our prayer for an executive pastor. And some of you already know him. You probably remember him when we did the round table on, uh, on, um, on uh, cultural injustice and social injustice. And we talked about racism and what is the gospel's response. He was sitting actually right next to me at the table. His name's Pastor Jesus. Yep, that's right. We got Jesus. Come on, Come on somebody. And uh, Pastor Jesus is going to become our executive pastor. Yeah. And uh, I'm telling you, we are thrilled. Our staff is thrilled. Our elders are thrilled. Our board is thrilled. Um, he's healthy. Uh, we love him so much. We've been in relationship with him and his family. And so not only is Jesus coming on board, but his beautiful family. Yes. Audra's gonna be a part yes. of the house. And Bella and Neo, their kids. And we just are so thankful to God. So and, uh, and so let me just let you know a, a couple of things. So Pastor Jesus has been an executive pastor before. He was an executive pastor at a very, very large church in New Mexico for years. And then God transitioned them and called them to come back to Austin to plant a church. And so they planted Vintage Church in Southeast Austin. And they've been so faithful over the last two, almost three years. And God's done an amazing work. Well, 
God started stirring on his heart, started stirring on our heart that maybe we're called to do ministry together. Maybe together we're actually better. And so we began to really seek God and God supernaturally began to open up doors and made yeah. it abundantly clear that, uh, that he is to become the executive pastor. And so what does that mean? I understand like language can yeah. be a little bit confusing. And so it's easy to hear this and go, okay, so like what is an executive pastor? So here's, here's what it means. Elisa and I will continue to lead the church. And so uh, we'll continue to lead, we'll continue to feed, we'll continue to cast vision, hear from God. Here's where God is taking us. Yeah. But Pastor Jesus' job is to come alongside our amazing staff team. I'll tell yeah. you, we've got like the best staff team That's on the right. planet. We thank God for them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, his job is to come alongside this amazing staff team and help connect the dots to get us to where God is calling us to be. I mean, think about that horse, right? I'm saying, hey, Elise and I are saying the horse needs to go over there. <laughs> Jesus is spurring that horse Come to on. death. Come on, somebody. In fact, he's spurring that horse to life. Come That's on. right. And, and he's steering that horse to get us to where we need to go. And we're so incredibly excited. Now, church, listen, that's big news just in of itself. Like, we're so incredibly excited. But this is not just Pastor Jesus is coming on board that he's answered our prayer, God's answered our prayer for an executive pastor. But on top of that, I mentioned to you Vert or, uh, Vintage Church. And uh, it's a church plant that they planted with the same Ark family that we're a part of. God was doing amazing things there and still is doing amazing things. So we started praying again. Could, could this be a thing where we're better together? Where, where instead of uh, laying vintage down or vintage maybe going to a different pastor, maybe vintage becomes a part of the vertical family. And so we started praying God again in supernatural ways, started opening up doors, revealing his will to us. So I'm yeah. pleased to announce we're not just getting an amazing executive pastor and family. Here it is, y'all. We're getting like new relatives. Come on, yes. somebody. Like vintage church is going to be adopted in to the vertical chapel family. We're going to absorb them, and they're going to be now a part of vertical chapel. Right. Now, let me just explain something to you. This is not a merge. A merge is where two churches come together or two different entities come together to form a brand new entity. That's not what's happening. Think adoption. We are adopting them, so now they're going to become a part of of the vertical family. So vertical pastors, uh, vertical uh, eldership, uh, vertical staff, and I'm telling you, we are so thrilled to have them become yes, part of it. It's like the right. family just grew. Come that's on, right. somebody. During COVID, what, what? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Like, I'm so excited. I want you to think about this, that you show up for a family reunion and you get to meet a bunch of family you never even knew you had. Yeah. Like, that's what's happening. And so Pastor Jesus and Audra have been I'm doing so an amazing job walking with their people. They're actually announcing it to the entire church today. Uh, same time we're doing this together. Why? Because... Together we're better, come on somebody. Right. And uh, we just couldn't be any more thrilled. And so I want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being faithful. And let you know just two very quick things. Pastor Sterling, uh, during the intro message uh, announcements, talked about our back-to-school snowball social yes. distancing. Come on. <laughs> and uh, I'm so excited about it. And Elise is excited about it. And I want you to know that this is an amazing opportunity. We want to give out so many snowballs, like snowballs, snow cones, whatever they are. We want to give out so many. We want, listen, bring your kids. Yes. I don't care what age they are. It's all free. We want to honor them, love them, encourage them. COVID's a big deal. We want them to know, look, yes. just because it looks different doesn't mean we're going to celebrate any less. That's right. We're going to celebrate what God is doing in their lives. So make sure you come. But here's what's exciting. We're also inviting our vintage family to come where they're going to get a chance to meet us. They're going to get a chance to meet you. So don't just come just for your kids. That is a good enough reason, but also come <laughs> to love on your new family members. It's going to be right. really special. Be so good. And then secondly and lastly, tonight, five o'clock, babe, five o'clock, five o'clock. 
Elisa and I, as well as Pastor Jesus and Audra, we're getting on together. We're going to do a Facebook Live meet and greet. That's right. And it's going to be a special moment where Elisa and I are getting to meet Vintage. Vintage is getting to meet us where uh, Pastor Jesus and Audra are getting to meet our vertical family. Vertical family, you get to meet them. Yes. And then also it's where it's both fun. sides of the family are coming together for this adoption. It's going to be awesome. It won't be long, maybe 30 minutes. Just want to encourage you, stop in if you have time, 5 o'clock, say hello, welcome Vintage family. And yeah. I just want you to know it's so easy with these type of situations where the language can be us and them. Like there's, there's vertical and then there's vintage. I want to look across this camera right now and I just want to speak into our vintage family and just let you know it's not going to be us and you. Yeah. It's going to be one church. That's and right. we are so excited and so honored to welcome you to become a, a life-giving part yes. of our vertical family. We love you. We, we yes. pray for you. We yes. feel like we already know you That's right. because Pastor Jesus and Audra have done such an amazing job loving you guys. Yes. And I know that we come up in a lot of y'all's conversations. And so we're so excited to make it official as we continue right. to love each other. I want to end with this verse. And Lisa's going to give two applications before we transition. Paul says it this way, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 11. Here it is. Therefore, encourage one another. And build one another up just as you are doing. We're going to encourage each other. And together, listen, that's the blessing. Yeah. We get to stay encouraged. Yes, there's going to be moments of discouragement. Elisa talked about it. We all face it. Maybe you're yeah. facing it right now. But the blessing, when we get to do it as a church family, when we get to do it together, we get to put courage into each other so that we can keep running this race. Elisa, what does it look like on a practical level? All right. So number one, we edify each other with acceptance. Come on. With acceptance. And so we are bringing on new family members. They're coming into the house. And so this is a new community to, of together. This is a new community of one church, right? On. We are one church. So we are making sure that we are welcoming new friendships, new relationships. We're engaging. That's right. And, and so just we edify each other with acceptance and with excitement. Like we Come are on. excited to welcome um, our new family That's right. in the house. And yes. then secondly, we edify each other with oneness. Yeah. It's again, it's that reminder that that we can do accomplish way more together. We can Come accomplish on. more together. And just like Sean said from the beginning, we is always greater than me. And so um, we're excited. We're so excited um, for Vintage uh, Church to join us. We're so excited to meet our new family yep. um, tonight at five o'clock. And yes. um, we're excited just to uh, welcome you and um, just get to know you guys and get to know your hearts and um, your passions. And we're excited. You know, and uh, I know, like, part of you, like, the big question is, like, what about a building? I mean, we're, there, you're probably thinking that. And I want you to know that God is moving and yeah. God is answering those prayers, too. That's right. And that's why we said over the next few weeks we'll continue to announce. We've still got some things to figure out, but I'm telling you, would you please keep praying? Because yes. God is moving. That's God right. is opening up doors. God is answering those prayers. And we'll share more as we have those details. I'm telling you, we're getting close. So let's keep focused. Yes. Come on, let's keep anchored. Let's keep encouraged. Well, we love you guys, and uh, we are so thankful for you. Yes. And in the meantime, we're going to keep giving you virtual hugs. Come on, <laughs> let's be a church that understands that we're better, we're better, we're better together. Amen. We love you guys. Love God bless you. We'll see you tonight, 5 o'clock, Facebook Live meet and greet. God bless you. That was an awesome sermon. It really was. We, uh, we have loved getting to hang out with you this morning. Just want to remind you, register for groups. Register for the awesome back to school event that we have coming up on Saturday. And don't forget, no Facebook Live right after service. Instead, 5 p.m. today, we're going to have a Facebook Live with Pastor Sean and Elisa, as well as Pastor Jesus and Audra. And we really hope to see you there. Have a great week. Yep. See you next week.